Welcome back, Bearded Banker Podcast listeners. I'm thrilled to introduce our next guest, a powerhouse in the New Jersey real estate world, Joseph Aziz, a distinguished NJ realtor and the proud owner of prestige property group Montclair. With an impressive nine years of real estate sales experience, Joey Aziz has consistently achieved a staggering volume of over $40 million per year in personal production. His track record is nothing short of exceptional. He's earned the Circle of Excellence Award for a remarkable eight years in a row, with six years at the platinum level. His cumulative sales surpass an astonishing $250 million, and he's taken his passion to new heights by opening a successful brokerage in Montclair, now boasting 40 realtors and counting. Behind his remarkable journey is a personal inspiration, Joseph's brother, attorney, and friend of mine, Peter Aziz. From fighting for his first sale at the beginning of his career, Joseph Aziz has overcome challenges that have shaped his path, such as a notably terrible showing experience, a nerve-wracking first closing, and navigating through failed listing appointments. But as we know, success often comes from pushing through those challenging moments, and Joey has definitely done that working towards his personal goal of building his dream home in his dream town, a testament to his dedication and hard work. And for those seeking further insight, Joe has his own YouTube channel where he shares valuable real estate advice and experiences from what to look out for from a certified home inspector's perspective when viewing properties for yourself or your clients to the renovation and construction process and even sales tactics. So whether you're a seasoned homeowner First time home buyer, flipper, investor, or agent yourself, Joe Aziz has you covered. I'm definitely excited for this one. Joey Aziz, welcome to the Bearded Banker podcast. How are you on this fine Saturday morning? Wow, what an intro. You like that? I forgot I did all that, honestly. <laughs> Just a little <laughs> reminder. Damn. Good for me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that intro, man. That's freaking awesome. Wow. Listen, man, can you, you give me all the me info. Morning? Can you call me every morning and just say that? We'll clip that out and we'll just make that an alarm for you. You can just wake up to it. <laughs> it's my ringtone. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, man? How are you? How's, how's your, your weekend so far? Well, you know, Saturday is my Monday. <laughs> so Saturday, Sunday, Monday is kind of like my busiest. For sure. And then I don't do shit during the week. And then... It all starts over. I hear that. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, I want to jump in. I want to start at the beginning with some questions I have, and I've known you for a little while now. We came in the game around the same time, 2013, 2014. I didn't know it was your brother, uh, PGA, that inspired you to get into real estate. What were you doing before? How did that all kind of happen? Um, I worked at Verizon full time. I worked. I've always been in sales. Um, you know, in, in college, I, I really wanted to go to law school. I was, you know, political science and pre-law, and I really, really wanted to go to law school. But um, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm also not, like, good with books and reading and stuff like that. So I was, I like more, like, talking to people. I'm, I'm more of a people person. So sales has always been my shtick, you know. And um, I worked for at and I worked for Verizon. I worked for Verizon Fios. I've always been in sales. So, like, sales was always my thing. But, you know, as with every position in life, you kind of outgrow it and you mature and get smarter and hopefully, you know, take everything to the next level constantly, always. So uh, my brother was like, hey, you know, I think you've outgrown Verizon. Why don't you try real estate? And I was like, ooh. Did he propose the law thing to you as well? Or was he was that kind of? Um, I, don't know, I feel like my brother kind of knew, like, I don't really like to read books. So <laughs> how can you go to law school and not read books? <laughs> So yeah, I, he just you know to be a realtor takes I think I think you just buy your license on Amazon. So I just did that and and became These a realtor. Days, yeah, right. <laughs> Definitely a lower barrier of entry. Yes, and that's then that's all I'm law. about. Yeah, but it's for better or for worse. But you know, you get some cream of the crop. You get a lot of people that don't know what they're doing, which probably makes it easier for the people that that do know what they're doing to stand sure. out. Yeah. I mean, the beauty about real estate is like you could buy a house as a first time buyer and use like the, the worst realtor in the world. You're eventually going to sell that house and buy another house. And that's my clientele. The people that are more educated have been through it, kind of went through a bad realtor or a bad experience. And now are more educated in doing the research before they let just a rando sell their house or buy a house with their cousin, their in-law yeah. that just got licensed. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. What are you doing? <laughs> So 
how did you, so now you decide real estate, you did home inspection first? No, actually, I, I, um, I sold one house my first year in real estate. It was, it was fucking brutal, dude. I think I showed that guy like 60 homes. <laughs> oh. And, you know, I had an infinity lease at the time and I had like 80,000 miles on it from, from showing homes and working clients that led to nothing. And um, like towards the end of my first year, I closed on that transaction and I made like eight grand and I'm like, Bleh. I got to make that money. That doesn't pay for the 60. That yeah, that doesn't pay for the showings. Right. I'm negative on this transaction. <laughs> so then you decide, I'll get my home inspection license to get something kind of consistent. Well, home inspectors make good money. They make like $600 a pop. And I was like, you know, I'm a workaholic. I could, I could do four or five inspections a day, you know? And uh, that was my whole thing. But unfortunately, you know, I quickly realized that I'm not cut out to be a home inspector, you know? I just don't have that level of patience. And, and I, I did the home inspection school and I went to inspection 21 in Paramus. It was like $6,000 and uh, it was a lot of hours of home inspection. It was, it was a lot, honestly, but it was That's very expensive. Novel. Six grand. Yeah, dude. It's, it's harder to be a home inspector than it is to be a realtor. And you have to, you have, to uh, have really good insurance too. And the liability is crazy. So, it's like being an attorney. <clears throat> it's like being an attorney. So I went to school, I finished, and by the time I was done, I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't carry around a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it was the ladder that did it for me. You know, I, <laughs> I was like, I'm not carrying around a ladder. I'm not going to be a home inspector. <laughs> this is it. I'm out. So I just focused on real estate, and I was like, you know what? People probably would really see the value in like, me showing them a house, but being able to tell them how old the HVAC is, the electrical panel, the service, the roof, how many layers, what type of siding, asbestos, vermiculite, year built, foundation. Like I knew everything about homes. I'm like, let me just fucking show people homes and be straight up and be totally honest. Because like, if you've ever been on showings with realtors, they're like, oh my God, look at the kitchen. And it's like that shitty Fabulwood kitchen with like ugly countertops. And they're like, you're paying top dollar for it. Meanwhile, I'm in the basement with like a flashlight, like, dude, there's a crack at the foundation. <laughs> So that first year, which we're going to talk about more, but going through those showings and then getting this license probably shed some light on all those houses you saw year one. Because you were probably so talking about the kitchen like that, that realtor before you were looking at the foundation with your inspection inspector's license. I mean, yeah. My favorite part about the house is the grading and then the basement. Uh, other realtors, you know, they just look at like the updates that were made. But I think what people don't realize is just like you're a first time buyer, there's first time homeowners that are first time renovators and they have no experience with contractors and electricians and, and they hire whoever. So like your renovation that you're paying top dollar for, you don't know what's going on behind the walls. So my, my spiel is why the hell wouldn't you just do it yourself? So that's what I always tell people because that guy who bought the house for me, the first house I bought, 60 showings. We did the home inspection, and it was a pre 1940s house in Bergenfield. And oh, that's where I grew up. That was yeah? your first sale. Yeah. Wow. Look it's at seven that. East Church Street. Look it up. That's he bought beautiful. it for three thirty. I just recently sold it for like seven ninety or something like that. Wow. Crazy. Full circle. Yeah. But during that home inspection, there was a main beam, and it had termite damage. And he hired his own home inspector because I didn't have anybody. And this guy took out a hammer and just starts fucking hammering at the beam. Like, pow, pow. He's like, there's so many termites. <laughs> and the guy's like holding his baby in the basement and there's wood flying everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, what do yeah, I do? Yeah, the main beam in the house is disintegrating as he's Yeah, he's dude. It. And I was like, this is freaking crazy. You know, down the now that I had the license, I'm like, oh, we could change this entire beam for like three grand. To, let's ask for a $6,000 credit. And that's, that's uh, basically, I forced that to close and he made out. He doubled his value. That's awesome, man. So that first year, we spoke about some of that in the intro with, the, uh, with that first closing, some terrible showings, uh, some failed listing appointments. Talk about some of that stuff in the beginning. <laughs> I mean, so many failures, door knocking failures. I think my, my worst showing that I've ever had was... Um, you know, it was a house in Upper Saddle River. It was, it was actually a listing appointment. I'm sorry. And this guy was like, yeah, I want to sell my house. He just called me randomly. 
And I should have been a red flag right there. I'm like, why are you calling me? I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so I look up the house. It's like a two and a half million dollar house. I'm like, okay, let's go. I'm here. And, um, I made it. I'm there. You tell me when you want me there, brother. I'm there. <laughs> you want me to wash your car? <laughs> so I, I went on that listing appointment. It was for six o'clock at night. And it was like in the winter time. So six o'clock, was, there was no daylight. And um, I get there at like 530 because I'm a crackhead. And I just wait outside and I text him. I'm like, hey, I'm here whenever you're ready. He's like, no problem. I'm just finishing up dinner with my family. I'll be right there. I'm like, okay, cool. This guy doesn't show up till like 8.30 at night. I was sitting in his driveway for like three hours. 5, 30, 6, 3, 7, yeah, three hours. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not leaving. I'm fucking here. I'm not leaving, bro. You could show up at midnight. I'm there. Mm -hmm. And um, he comes in and he's, he's apparently had went for ice cream after dinner like with no regard to me sitting in his driveway. And he comes up to me and he hands me a vanilla ice cream cone. He's like, here you go. I got you an ice cream. And you know me, I love ice cream. So I was like, oh, thank you. So we're immediately forgiven. <laughs> so he takes me inside his house. This guy walks inside this huge house. Like if you're showing somebody your house, right? You're going to kind of be like, this is the foyer. This is the living room. This is the blah, blah. This guy just walked into his house threw his keys to the side, walked in the kitchen, starts making a coffee. Doesn't say anything to me. I'm standing there, I'm like, do I take my shoes off? Like, what do I do right now? And um, I walked in the kitchen, and he starts making me a coffee, and I noticed there's no furniture in the house. Everything's just on the floor. Like, no dining room, no living room, nothing. Just the kitchen was a mess. And I'm like, do you live here? He's like, yeah, yeah, I live here. I just haven't had bought furniture yet. I'm like, okay. Tell me more. We go to the house. So he shows me the whole house. Um, all his clothes on the floor, nothing in the closets. Like everything was just a mess. It was super weird. But the weirdest part about that showing is at the end, he's like, you have to see the backyard. So we go in the backyard. It's pitch black, like dark. It's like at this point, it's like 11 o'clock at night, right? Well, you had a whole ice cream, some coffee. I had ice cream. I was bloated. I was like, fuck. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> We're standing in the backyard. He's like, yeah, this is on three acres. It's huge. I'm like, yeah, I can't even see. And then like from like the very far distance, I see like two eyes. And I'm like, what is that? He's like, oh, that's, uh, that's my uh, German assault dog, German shepherd assault dog. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, she just hangs out in the backyard. I forgot, I forgot about her. And, I, and then those two eyes are just like fucking running towards me like so fast and in, in, in it's cold out it's cold out so like you you see the breathing of the dog and this yeah. thing flies towards me doing like 40 miles an hour and i'm like oh my god this dog is gonna fucking kill me because he's never she's never seen me before and she flies right past me uh, like almost knocks me over and flies into the house like into the wall of the house and he's like yeah she's stupid and I look at this guy and I'm like, I have to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I left. I never, I never even got a call or text from him. I never spoke to that guy again. So what was it his house? I mean, I don't know. That's real estate for you. That's that real estate for you. Here's real estate. Right. Right. And you're like $2 million listing. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm showing up. I'm on time. This guy has no regard for your time. Yeah. But like, you know, I've been in weird, I've been in weird situations, you know, you see, I went to a house in Bayonne. <laughs> I went to a house in Bayonne one time, and I kid you not, it was a t it was a three family house, one family living in the whole house, and every single toilet had shit in it, and the toilet seat was up. There were and they, and they they would just like brush past it. The first time, the first bathroom, I'm like, oh, there's shit in that toilet. Whatever. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know, you know? Second unit. Both bathrooms. Shit in it. Third floor. Both bathrooms. Shit in it. Are you like, is there a plumbing issue? Are you, are you bringing anything I mean, up? Point, I mean, at that point, I'm like, I need to leave. Yeah. Because these people, they're going to make me eat shit. <laughs> it's something weird. <laughs> Maybe they like the smell of it. They're just like leaving it. It's like potpourri. Potpourri. There you go. Yeah, I think, you know, and you 
being an investor and flipping houses and I've done a little bit of that and just walking through some properties and seeing how people live or how they leave the house and you see some stuff, man. Yeah, people be living weird. Yeah. People live weird. And even like my wife's cleaning company, you know, we go clean for people and that sometimes is just as crazy as real I estate. Imagine, I can imagine. Because they're like, oh, we need some organization and you walk in, it's like little hoarder, like they need to call the to, TLC to, show. Oh my, there's a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. I just walked into a house, uh, they shower, and it's a single family. They shower in the second floor bathroom, and the tiles are all coming off the shower. So the water is leaking into the living room, and they're still, they're still showering. What are you doing? Yeah. What's happening? I think that's like a mental issue. Yeah. No, there's definitely some stuff. There. Sure. And you see a lot as an agent, especially an agent of your, your caliber. Are you still taking out all of your clients? Are you... Caliber. <laughs> well, the intro, you heard that intro. I mean, it's serious. Are Caliber. you uh, or are you only taking some clients and giving them to the team? How are you setting that up? I don't, I don't really like teams. I don't do teams. You know, if you, if you, if you call me to be your realtor, you get me. Um, I have realtors that I split deals with in the office. The, those deals go into those, those realtors' names. And um, they're there for the showings. But I have to sign off on every house. I have to visit the house. I have to go there. I have to look at it. I have to approve of the purchase price, all that stuff. So uh, 90% of the time, I'm very hands-on with all my clients. And if I list the house, it's me, 100%. Appraisals, sure, yeah. inspections, all that stuff, because that's, that's why you hire me. Right, and they, they want you. They want your expertise. Yeah. I mean, any schmuck can start a team. You look at every team out there at uh, like EXP, for, just for example. <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? You know, just the one that came to my head. Or we can't use EXP, right? Look at ZXP, for example. <laughs> you have all these teams, bro. There's so many teams. There's like 40 people on the team. Nobody knows what they're doing. And the team leader is doing like 4 million in sales. What are you doing? What are you doing, yeah. What are you doing? You need to be on a team. <laughs> You're right. It's like, come on, you got to be doing 20 million plus for five years before you call yourself a mega whatever, you know, You're, you got to stop. This has to stop. And it's going away because the beauty of teams when the market is slow is that the team leader says to himself, fuck all these realtors. I'm not making money. I need to make money. So you guys are free to fend for yourselves. And then that's how teams disappear. Yeah, because there's not enough production for everybody. That's right. And these and people haven't learned how paid. to be consistent and the bill's got to get paid. He's got a new Range Rover and unfortunately he cannot give you any more buyers or listings or sales. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I think, you know, I've, I have a team, not from my own production, just kind of, I guess, kind of how you would do it, where it's just showing them the ropes um, and what I've learned over 10 years of doing this, but it's their own business. I don't take a cut from anything they do. They don't, you know, I'm not just giving them leads unless it's something that makes sense for them that i can't do but you gotta you gotta eat what you kill you know you gotta you gotta do it yourself you gotta build your brand but on the flip side in my office because you know i try to recruit realtors and i and i i have my my i preach that if you join prestige your business will grow and what i mean by that is if you're slow and i see you hustling making phone calls i will trust you to work a buyer with you i will give you a buyer and we'll work it together We'll create a WhatsApp group chat with that said buyer and all those offers and all those, if we get an offer accepted, it's going under your name so that you can build your brand. And a lot of people won't do that. Um, if I get a listing in the office, I tell the agents, here's the photos, here's the floor plans, here's the description, put it on social media as if it's your own listing. I don't give a shit. Send out mailers as if it's your own listing. I don't give a shit. I want you to succeed and grow. Yeah, a lot of agents they care about that. They'll list a house and then be like, "Hey, you, you're you're posting my house." Yeah, we'll give them credit. Like yeah, but like, don't you, you want it to get the marketing, bro? If if a seller hires you to sell their house and you have another realtor in your office trying to market that seller's house, why the fuck would you let them do that? These realtors that they got to put their egos aside, you know. Yeah, I think it's I think it's an ego thing. You usually see uh, the older, older realtors. It usually is. Yeah. yeah. Like, why are you posting? Why are you sharing my thing on this social media? Yeah, that's my listing. Right. Listen up here, buckaroo. That's how old realtors talk. 
they sound just like them with their old headshots. Snap ears. I don't want to. I don't want to beat up on them too much because you know, but they know who they are. So you mentioned uh, another brokerage that we won't. Say my, it rhymes with Smith Morshin. <laughs> um, Morshin. Why not? Why prestige? Why not one of these new online? Is it for those reasons? Was it something you wanted to build yourself? Um, there's a lot of red tape with like those big corporate companies and I'm not going to a cloud-based office. You know, we have a beautiful 2000 square foot office in the heart of downtown Montclair. We will eventually open another one up in Bergen County. Um, I try to keep it a perfect mix of like a small homey office, but also uh, a prestigious popular brand like Keller Williams or Christie's or like one of those other good brands, but without all the drama, you know, like. Go to Christie's, list your house, and if the agent does a shitty job, ask for an unconditional withdrawal. You'll never get it. You'll never get it. I can't. I have to talk to corporate. I have to do this. I have to do that. Not with us. If we list your house and you don't think I'm doing a good job one month in, unconditional withdrawal signed within 24 hours the way it should be. You will never get that at Callaway and Christie's, all those companies. They won't even tell you what an unconditional withdrawal is. Mm -hmm. How do I know this? Because the seven listings from this year alone called me and they say, please help sell my house. I, I, I was like, listen, you have a realtor right now. It's listed. You need an unconditional withdrawal. They should be able to give it to you within 48 hours, right? Nope. It's a fucking problem. The broker's got to get involved. Why aren't you happy? Blah, blah, blah. That's just one piece of it. Then there's a lot of uh, commission. You know, you can only take 5%. Or you can only do this. You can't negotiate. You can't reduce your commission. We signed an agreement. That's not real estate, bro. Real estate's people. Mm -hmm. Building relationships, doing favors, building value. You know? I can't tell you how many times builders, I've worked with builders and it's 4% for a new construction. But I find my own buyer. I find my own buyer. I'm like, here, 2.5%, bro. Let's move on to the next one. You'll never get that at Christie's or there are all these other companies. It's not going to happen. You signed a 5% listing agreement. You got to get the 5%. And I see it. I see them losing business to me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm young in the game. I'm eight years in. I'm, I shouldn't have, I have no business doing the volume that I'm doing. But it's because I know how to build relationships and do favors and build value. You know, you it's have like that a sales background. You're like, what do we have to do to make a deal? I have a people background. Okay. I know how to deal with people. Sure. Sales is sales. If you walk into Verizon, you're buying a fucking iPhone because you need it. Like I, I could be the worst salesman in the world. You're going to get an iPhone. I'm talking about people. I, I, I'm helping people. If you're going to buy a house, right, and you deal with me, I guarantee you, you're going to have a better time. You're going to feel more comfortable and you're going to be more knowledgeable than dealing with anybody else. Yo, clip that. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, we're going to clip that for sure. That, that was, was fucking good. awesome. Do the intro and then add that <laughs> We're keeping all this too, just so you know. Um, do you have a, a passion for real estate? Did it develop or is your passion just people and real estate just kind of is where you landed? I would say I have an equal passion for both. I have an equal passion for real estate and I have an equal passion for helping people. I know every realtor says, I love helping people. But if you don't know I can get paid for it, you're not going to love helping people. <laughs> um. From day one, before I started making money with real estate, I always said, like, people first. Put the money aside. I don't give a shit. If I lose 20 grand helping you, I don't fucking care. And I live by that motto. Hey, we got an offer on your house. I would love to take it because, like, we can close quick and I'll get paid. But I don't think we should take it. I think we should wait and we can get more. Because the difference for you is going to be 100 grand. And then having the skill set to know if that's true or not. Right. You, you know? don't shoot yourself in the foot. You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot because, you know, there are times where you have to take a lower offer for sure. The market has ups and downs. You just got to flow with it. You got to ebb and flow with the market. You know? Do you think if, or let me rewind, do you think that you had that passion for real estate before getting into it or that you learned uh, I'd say it my, as you... my passion for real estate happened when I bought my first three family. Uh, like, Everybody told me not to do it, which like, I don't know, you don't really know me that well, but like, if you tell me not to do something, 
it's fucking getting done, bro. I aggressively bought a three family house in Belleville. And I remember the day I closed, the tenant just left all the guard. They fucked up the apartment. It was bad. And I would go there every night and I would demo. I would rip up the carpets, take out the cabinets, undo the, the switches. I would take off all the trim around the windows and the base. And I would remove all the doors and I would put it all in the middle and I'd have my clean out guy do it because I couldn't put a dumpster there. And, um, and I just like, I just renovated each apartment on credit cards. And, I'm, and then, and then That's I- That's like social media guru 101. I mean, yeah. I mean, to do that back then, I, I had no money. I, I right. bought the house. I had 30 grand in my account. I bought the house with 30 grand. I think I was left with like three grand. And um, I just put everything on credit cards. And I just, every dollar I was, every closing, I made seven grand, six grand, five grand, whatever, went right towards the house. I was doing nothing but that house. And then I rented each apartment for 1800 each floor. And I did a cash out refi. I pulled out like 50 grand. I got 50 grand and bought another property. And that's so property- at what point during that process where you're like, oh, this is for me. Because people told you not to do it for the exact reasons of what happened as soon as you picked it up, right? You got to deal with tenants. They trash the place. Like, you don't really want to do that. You don't want to be in this game. It's a headache. You're doing the demo yourself. Like, all of that was probably why people were like, you don't want that. I would say, honestly, at that time, I was 31. And this is like, I don't know if this is, this is not cool. But what did it for me was my, my second tenant that I signed was 42. And I was like, damn, I'm 31, renting to a 42-year-old. And I was talking to a 42-year-old. He's like, yeah, you know, buying is stupid. It's, a, it's, it's just so expensive to buy. And I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, damn, bro. That's a, that mentality has led you to be 42 years old with no real estate. And I'm like, I'm, by the time I'm 42, bro, I'm going to be making 50 grand a month clean besides my earned income. So that's what sealed the deal for me, you know? And honestly, just, I hate to see it, but like you go to a diner, you go to like a car wash, or you see like, you know, ordinary people working really hard at older ages. And you just think of like yourself and your family. And you're like, I don't want that for myself or my family. You know, honestly, by the time I'm 45, I want to be able to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with my family. That's my goal. I think that's an incredible goal. I think a lot of people just equivalent success with physical things, but as I get older, I'm starting to realize like success is time, like to get the time to do, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, go to vacations with your family, maybe four or five times a year, like maybe live in France for two months. Like that's, that's the shit that I want to do. And everything that I'm doing right now will lead me there. That's a lot of upfront you, you put in time. I mean, I've watched you yeah, literally I mean, do it all and do a lot of it. Yeah. It's a lot of upfront pain for long-term pleasure. <laughs> Clip that. I mean, yeah, go to Miami, go talk to anybody that's 40, 50 years old in Miami and just walking around shopping. I do it. You know, I go to design district. I always, I love talking to people. I'll bump, bump into somebody. We'll talk watches. We'll talk cars. And I always ask like, what do you do? How'd you get here? Do you work? How often are you in Florida? Blah, blah. Florida is just one place. Talk to Europeans. Talk to people in France. Talk to people in Italy. You know, I, I met a guy in France. I was in France and I was talking to him. He was at a restaurant sitting next to us. I could tell he was American. I was bullshitting with him. He's like, yeah, I'm here six months out of the year. I have an apartment two blocks from the Eiffel Tower. And I'm like, that's the move, baby. Let's go. I want to be and able to- the majority of these people own real estate? Is that what you like? It's all real estate. It's all, it's real, all estate. real estate. There's always, like, there's always like a company. Like I met a guy, another guy. He owns- um, he, he, he does manufacturing uh, logistics. So like Amazon will build a warehouse and they'll use him to correlate the machines with the box. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But I'm like, oh my God, that sounds crazy. He's like, the money's good, but I take the money and I put it into real estate. So like you have your job, your earned income, and you make your earned income, you know, 1099 or W2, and then you use it to buy real estate. That's the game. That's the game. What kind of agents is Prestige looking for to that point? Like, is it people that, I mean, obviously that understand that, but are you looking for people that 
yeah. have that aligned with that passion or that, that path, or could it be anybody or just people trying to sell? Is it new agents, experienced agents? I've come to realize that most realtors will not have the passion or fire that I have. Mm. It's few and far in between. And the ones that do usually are mega agents and mega agents have too big of an ego to join my office because it's me. Yeah, I'm cutting the checks. They're not going to take their check from me, which I respect mm -hmm. that because I wouldn't do that either. But my ideal agent at Prestige is somebody doing, I would say two to 10 million, two to 10 million. You guys want to say hi to my dog? Yeah, say hi. It's chance. For the people that are watching. The people that are listening are going to be like. Um, two to 10 million in sales. If you're doing two to 10 million in sales and you're making money, but like you feel like you can't put as much into your business as, you, as, you, as you'd like to, but you'd also want to double or grow your business. Because that's, that's my thing. I, my first year, I, I did bronze. My second year, I hit gold. Skipped silver, went to gold. And I have been platinum ever since. And this year has my, been my best year. I think I, I, I should have touched 50 million by now. 50 million in sales. But next year, it's going to be 60. I just have to keep increasing my price point so I can get to 100 million in sales while figuring out how to work less, right? But if you're an agent doing 2 to 10 million in sales, I promise you, you can double your business if you just shut up and use the tools that we pay for and you, and you, and you put in the work. The last five years has been, um, the last five years has been like a, like a, like makeup because you're closing two sales a, a, a month, right? And you're like, I'm doing good. But those two sales are, anybody could have done those two sales because the rates were low. It was easy to buy a house, but now you're doing two sales a year and it's just not the same. You know, you have to go into work as a realtor every single day and pretend like you're just starting out. You know, I always tell the agents, they don't believe me, but you could talk to anybody that I was with at Modern Realty, 8 a.m. in the office, I leave for appointments during the day, eat lunch in the office, and I'm leaving the office at 9 p.m., 10 o'clock. Cold calling, door knocking, prospecting, social media, all of it, consistently every day, like a fucking crackhead. I wasn't going to dinners. I wasn't hanging out. I wasn't hanging out with my friends. Every day, seven days a week. And unfortunately, uh, I'm a man. You have to do it as, as, a, as a young man. I would say if you're 24 watching this, all the way up to 31, you should be doing it every single day because that's a time frame where you as a man build your career and your life. So that at 31 and onward, you can focus on family, building relationships with either your family or a loved one. So <clears throat> I think I realized that a little bit late. I focused on work too much, but now, you know, I'm not that old. I'm 35, so I'm, I'm correcting. And I've built a steady business. So. No, you've done, you've done good, man. I think, again, having that come in the game at the same time, I feel like we've been on a similar trajectory. I'm 36. Um, no kids 36? yet. Yeah, it's Get September. Baby face, man. You look good. Thank you, brother. A wrinkle in sight. <laughs> so <laughs> we're at the same point, you know? It's kind of that time to start thinking about those things. And that's the reason why I ask about who Prestige is, is looking for or hiring because I know the time you've put in. And I'm sure you're like, I need people that are hungry or, you know, that at least have a certain um, reputation or, 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 or passion or, you know, they represent the company well. So, and it's a tough time right now, you know, to say that you're going to have your best year this year. Not a lot of people can say that that's from all the time you've put in, um, and doing it full time. Are you, are you, do you take like part-time realtors or is that like not? Yeah, we take part-time realtors, but you help, well, you, you have to have sales experience and close, close transactions. You can't be a brand new. I'll be honest yeah. with you. You're a brand new realtor. We won't take you. Um, and honestly, you're not going to come to this office and be motivated by me. Like, I'm not going to sit here and motivate you every morning. That's not how this operates. That's not how this is. You're self-motivated. You're just using our tools and I'm here for guidance. Like I, I, I'll give you a few realtors, call, go down the list, call anybody in the office. If you could look up the office roster, call any realtor in the office and say, Hey, does Joe answer his phone when you call him? And has he helped you personally with deals that fell apart, negotiating inspections, negotiating appraisals, 
doing this differently, figuring out how to be more successful when you're cold calling, whatever it is. If you're, you know, you ever like play, um, you ever play that video game where like you get points and you can increase your player's stamina or whatever. Like, I feel like all the realtors that come into prestige are at like a two from a 10 and every experience, every transaction, everything brings you up to a 10 on all levels. So negotiating, marketing, all that stuff. I want all the realtors to be a 10. And on, it takes time. It's not overnight. It takes time. But the one thing that we don't do is we don't motivate. We, you're, you may be motivated by seeing me like in the office hot sheet. Like, you're like, what the fuck? There's like six new listings coming in and four closed every week or every other week. And you're like, how? Why? And I always, we, we put out the market, uh, the monthly calendar. And one of them is like one-on-one -on -one with Joe. Always an opportunity. And if you really are struggling and, and even when you join Prestige and you're not using the tools that we give you like Mojo Dialer and all that stuff, have a one-on-one -on -one with me and I will literally tell you what to do. And if you don't do it, that's on you. I'm not going to sit here and call you every morning. Hey, bud, did you cold call? Did you door knock? Did you clean out your emails? Did you clean out your text messages? Did you follow up with that realtor.com lead I sent you? I don't care. You could do it. You could not do it. Doesn't affect me. Are there quotas? No quotas, no. Okay. So you're looking for relatively experienced agents, two to 10 million, self-motivated, that want to grow. Yeah. Come and there's no, you know, you share all the secrets, which aren't really secrets. It's all the stuff we know how to do. It's just actually doing it. There's some secrets. I'm sure there's some. A little secret. But most of the, most of the stuff is, you know, basic stuff that is out there for the people to consume. But do they do it? Like you said, seven days a week, eight to eight. Yeah, consistency is the biggest problem with realtors. They get a closing. If a realtor gets three, three, four closings in a month, yo, they're gone. They're gone. Come on, family. Time for vacation. That's not how that works. Change their lifestyle. Yeah. Buy real estate. I didn't go anywhere for like six years. I went nowhere. Just, oh, here, there's four closings this week. Cool. I could buy more real estate. You know, mm -hmm. that was my main thing. I just cared about buying real estate. And that first, second year where you skipped silver circle of excellence, what did you do differently? If there's a secret in there that you can share, how did you kind of jump or, or was it a mindset thing or something tactical strategy? I would say... I would say my biggest check was a house that I sold in Chatham. It was, uh, it was like 2.7 million or something like that. And um, it was listed with three different Chatham realtors who only did Chatham. Chatham Township, I'm sorry. Big difference. And um, I had met her showing another property. And I was just like, hey, you know, what, are you, do you have a realtor? And she's like, I do, but... It's contingent on the sale of my house. And I was like, well, I'd love to, you know, if the house isn't selling, I'd love to interview for the job. I'd love, I'd love the opportunity. She's like, yeah, come look at the house. I'm, I'm taking it off the market for the winter time. So she took it off the market and I went to her house and I'm like, damn, this house is sexy. Um, 11 Lincoln Circle, Chatham Township. And uh, I went to the house. I'm like, damn, this thing, the, there's a lake in the back and the house surrounds the lake. So the, the, whoever built that house built it around the lake. And I noticed like none of the other realtors did a video on that. And I did a video on it. And the living room overlooks the lake. The master bedroom overlooks the lake. The basement walk out to the lake. And I just made this really cool video, one, shape, one take overlooking the lake. And I put it on every MLS, like even Hudson County. Like I just put it everywhere. And I was there personally for every single showing. And found a buyer from California within six days. And the commission check was like 120000 Um, I spent like five grand between marketing, cleaning the place up, cleaning it out, all that stuff. But it made me realize two things. Like, there really is no ceiling. Like, I could tell a house like that once a week if, if I do some crazy marketing, crackhead level stuff, door knock, all that stuff. There's no ceiling. If you want to make 150 grand a week, you can. That's the beauty of real estate. 
Um, but it also made me realize like real estate is real estate. You have a product, right? It's a sweater. It's a pair of pants. It's a watch. It's whatever. If nobody wants it now, somebody will want it eventually because it's a place to live. And as long as there's no defects or it's not overpriced, somebody's going to buy it. It just needs to be marketed and sold correctly. And from that point on, I looked at every single person I met as an opportunity. So like you meet somebody within 30 seconds. You, if you meet me and you don't know me within 30 seconds, we are friends. Whether you're buying or selling a house or not. I know people that bought a house. I met them like a month after they bought the house. And then a year and a half later, they call me to sell it. So like, I always say real estate for later, not for now. And what I mean by that is like a lot of realtors are just doing business for now. Let's fucking close. I don't give a shit about you. I just want to fucking close. I don't give a shit if you have equity or value or if, the, if I over negotiate the appraisal or inspection. I don't give a shit. I just want to make money now. And, I'm, and I always tell the agents in the office, make money for the future. Whatever you can do to help your clients, put your clients first. I truly mean that. A lot of realtors say, put my clients first. No, you don't. Put your clients first, no matter what, over everything. Timing, money, your situations, your life. Clients first. And that's how you build business for later. That was good the, the, the closing is almost just like the beginning. <laughs> If it's even your closing, like you said, that wasn't even your deal. A month later, you meet them and you're putting in work for a year and a half later when they want to sell to get that yeah. client. I, um, I, bought, I, I bought a car yesterday. And, um, nice. Congrats. Thanks. I, had a, I just did a trade in. I got a different car. Okay. And um, while waiting, I was sitting at the dealership and I was, I was talking to this guy. Turns out he's a builder, big time builder. Start bullshitting with him. We're getting the same car. He's like, oh, we're talking. Made a great connection. Added him, Instagram, Facebook, got his number, shared my contact, boom. My dealership, my, my car guy, he does a lot of, uh, he's very, he knows a lot of people. Built a great relationship with him. Gave him a bottle of wine and a gift card. Great relationship. Overpaid for the car. Still gave him, <laughs> still gave him a bottle of wine and a gift card, right? The finance manager talking to me. He sees my email. He's like, you're a realtor? I'm like, yeah. He goes, oh yeah, I bought a house. Um, I bought a two family. My realtor, I, I never met him. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, he was on a team and every showing there was one guy. And then for the inspection, there was another guy. And he's like, I'm looking for another house. I'm like, are you going to use the same realtor? He's like, I mean, I am using the same realtor now, but like, I don't, I was like, did you have a good experience? He's like, no. I was like, Did he happened? know him personally at all ever prior to? I knew him personally. But he never got the service. Never got the service. And I'm pretty sure that guy's going to buy a house with me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure too. So like, I don't know, man. I just feel like consistency with the marketing and all that stuff is great. But also consistency with like putting people first. Because like, I don't care how successful or busy you are. I had one guy, my, my, my best client inquired on a $120,000 condo like six years ago. And I called him up. I'm like, what's up? How can I help? How are you? What are you looking for? And he's like, I'm, I want a condo. I'm like, why, why a condo? Let's buy a two family. He's like, I'm also looking at two families. He bought a $400,000 two family, sold it. Mm -hmm. Bought a $600,000 two family, sold it. Bought a $500,000 single family, is about to sell it and buy an $800,000 single family, and has referred me over $10 million in business. So, like, I really mean that because real estate will punch you in the stomach. But if you help everyone and treat everyone equally and really, really put your clients first, it'll pay you back tenfold. That's why I did $60 million in 2023, and everyone else is, is fucking struggling to get a rental. Mm hmm relationships yeah what you know do you tell those clients go ahead you know who you know who can afford a house right now who educated client anybody making over 150 grand that has over 200 grand saved up to buy a house and is educated they're going to do their research you don't know what you're doing i'm going to look at a house with you and i'm going to say nah this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's doing let's find another realtor 
as opposed to the past five years where it's like, oh, you're a realtor? Please get me in. You promise you can get me the house? Okay, let's do it. Let's go. Oh, I don't give a shit. Rates are 3%. Let's go. My first time buying. Right. Yeah. Now, because it's more difficult they're they're, gone. and they're right. educated, they're looking for the people that know what they're doing yep. even more, which is good for people like you. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. That's why I always say too that, you know, it's okay. Let every, let all the riffraff, even on the lending side, people came into the oh, business yeah. the same Probably way. The exactly. Yeah, cash, you know, all those refis and everything. And now just like, it's like, all right, you know, there's there's no money here for you in the refi game. Just, you can uh, You know, and I see, I see it because I get calls, you know, lenders call me all the time. I'm like, dude, enough. I had lenders come to my open houses. I had three I've different lenders. I've done that lenders. before. You have? When I first started, I would just show up. Just you first that. I would show up. Here's my card. I'm just, I you know, it's okay when you first start, but like, uh, you're 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 a lender, twelve years in the game, and you're going to open houses, soliciting realtors. Like, I don't allow you and my lender to go to open houses. Like, I don't want a lender there. I want mm -hmm. the client to have the best experience and see if they like the house. You I always thought that being the lender at the open house, like hosting, was a little intimidating for the clients. Yeah, um, I never really liked it. But I did like to pass by and shake hands with the agent and check out the property because I have clients that are pre-approved. I know what they're looking for too. I could be like, hey, there's this house, you know, you guys should check it out. Um, just getting my name out there. But yeah, I agree 12 years in 12 going years personally in. and, you know, unless it's you and I'm like, hey, John, passing by. I want to say what's up. It's been a while. Yeah. I mean, like that, I've had lenders that I know come in and say, yo, here's some cookies and do you mind if I leave my business cards here? And if they do that, I'm like, dude, totally. You know, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not leaving my cards forever. I'll just give you my card, introduce myself to you. I'll oh, like if you've never met? Yeah, yeah. Right, 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 yeah. But even if it was you, I wouldn't go in and be like, hey, here's all my stuff. Like, no, I'm just coming to say what's up and see the yeah, house. Listen, every, everybody's got everybody's to gotta make money and get business, right? So you, you, you doing that is my version of door knocking. Right. It's the same thing. Yeah. Um, you mentioned a lot there about the way you do business. Is that, would you call that personal branding? Like this, what's Joey Aziz's personal brand? Do you push that in the office for everyone to have their own? That's a big thing, buzzword, personal branding. Um, yeah, I mean, you how never- How do you feel about that? Yeah, everybody has to. So we have a social media manager. You switch to Prestige, we handle everything for you. And you sit down with the social media manager and it's just basically an hour to two hours of her shitting on your social media presence. and your Google, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your WhatsApp, your Snapchat, your Instagram, your YouTube, everything, your Realtor.com, your Zillow, your personal website, your landing page, everything is fucking dissected. And it takes a long time to be relevant online. It takes like six to 12 months to be relevant online. And everything has to be perfect from the address to the comma to everything. And everything has to be consistent. You have to be posting across all platforms. After six months is when you start to see results. And if you're not consistent, you're not going to see shit, you know? And that's the first thing that we do because a lot of agents come and they're fucking lost, man. Some of them don't even have a Google profile. I'm just like, I was going to say dissecting everything to the extent they have all those things. It might yeah. not be anything to dissect. My Google profile is Joseph Aziz Real Estate. It's not Joseph Aziz Prestige Property Group or Joseph Aziz Keller Williams or John Cocktoes Toy EXP. Like, that's not your brand. You're branding EXP. You're branding Keller Williams. You ever see, like, Instagram where it's, like, Keller Williams, top 10, and they're, like, number three, and they're posting it? I'm like, yo, what are you doing? You're just giving everybody 10, nine other people to call besides you. That's so stupid, man. And, and it's, like, the common sense for marketing is gone. And a lot of realtors just don't get it. It's embarrassing. But you know what? If I was a buyer... I would call number one. Why the fuck would I call you? <laughs> yeah, you're almost doing that promotion for... Promoting another realtor. Yeah. You put, a, you put the brand's office, the brand in your, in your name, you're promoting another realtor. My business is Joseph Aziz Real Estate LLC. Bank account, the LLC, everything. My website is Joseph Aziz Real Estate LLC.net. My Instagram is Joe and J Realtor, and my other one's Joseph Aziz Real Estate. Even as an owner. As an owner of the yeah. of Prestige Property Group, I could literally move to any company right now and be unaffected online.
and database and having your own CRM and all your own, like, because when it's tied to I the... Use CRMs. Yeah. Or at CRMs. least uh, some type of, I mean, your contacts, you have something where you have all these people's. That's the secret that I'll tell uh, any agent that joins Prestige. But I will tell you this. Go in your contact list, in your phone, and, and look how many contacts you have. I did this the other day. You know how many contacts I have? I have over 12,000 phone numbers, full name, email address, and cell phone numbers in my phone book. 12,000. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. I have, so, and we've been in the game around the same time, so I have about 12 in my CRM, 12K, but in my phone, there's definitely not 12,000 names and numbers. So a lot of people don't realize this, right? But your phone book, this is a little nugget. Your phone book is like the... What's the, what's the thing that the glove that Thor wears? Not Thor. Oh, uh, yeah. I know you're talking about. I'm not I mean, a no. comic guy, but. Uh, Whatever. You know what I mean? Your phone book is that glove, right? And that glove of The power. stones with the stones in it, right? Yeah. What's it called? I don't know. Oh, I'm playing it out, man. <laughs> anyway, your phone book is that in regards to real estate. When you, your phone is separated between first name, last name, middle name, email slot, phone, uh, phone number slot. If all that stuff is filled out correctly, right? Go into my phone book. Everything's filled out. First name, last name. If they have the address, I'll put the address, the email address. And that's saved in my phone book proper. Because if you save that in your phone book, right? It's easier for social media to pick that up. You ever see people you might know? Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. For you? It comes from your phone book. Mm. What? Game changer. I just changed everybody's life. Instagram, that's Facebook, a, that's LinkedIn, a gem, Snapchat, yeah. WhatsApp, Twitter, YouTube, WhatsApp stories. It's all based off your phone book. And nobody knows. Nobody realizes it. You call me like a butt dial. Hey, Joe, is that property still available? No, I'm sorry. It's sold. Okay, no problem. Good luck. Boom. Take out my phone. I have caller ID. Create new contact. Saved. I now have a buyer in my phone. What is that buyer going to do? I'm going to do no work. I'm never going to talk to that person again. I'm going to do no work. What are they going to do? They're going to buy a house, right? And that buyer turned into a homeowner. And now I have a homeowner's phone in my contact. And they're going to fucking see me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Twitter, YouTube. They're going to see me. They're going to come across me at some point because they're in my phone book. Every single phone call you get as a realtor is a lead, even if you don't work it. Mm, that's a gem too. Yeah, cut Even that out. Don't work it. Tag me. So that's impressive because knowing you and your your personality and your, you know how busy I know you are and everything you got going on with the production you do, you still make sure that that contact is immaculate. Everything is filled out every time the phone rings. That's something that you. Every time the phone rings, the contact's filled out. Every morning, my email is cleaned out. Every night, my email is cleaned out. Every morning, I clean out my text messages. I know exactly what's going on at any, any given moment. I like I never, that. I do the same. At like I tell my team because I, I use my email as like a to-do list. Like if, there's, if it's there, it needs to get handled. As soon as it's handled, it's moved out to a folder. And I try to impart this. Like, hey, you have to be organized and every night checking your thing. So that makes a lot of sense in, into why you're, you have the production you do. Touching on this you know, little segue here, talking about what we talked about a little earlier with the time in your life that you're in and sacrificing so much and everything you just spoke about of how meticulous you are with those contacts. Do you have balance in your life, work-life balance? Is that a thing? And I want to segue this into clearing up this Ryan Serhant question. So <laughs> I want to let you take that and, and run with it. Um, no, there's no balance. Real estate has become my personality and honestly, like, it's cool, but I'm busy. I don't need to like harass my friends and family and any new person I meet to get their real estate business. I don't need it. I care more about relationships. I have my, one of my good friends. We smoke cigars. We hang out all the time. He has a realtor. I don't care. I care more about the relationship and the friendship. Um, I asked Ryan Serhant a question. I, I asked him that question because he has a wife and kids. I don't. So I asked him, I'm like, is there a moment where you're not Ryan Serhant the realtor? Is there a moment where you're just Ryan Serhant the dad, where you put your phone aside, you have breakfast with your family, 
and you're not like posting online, you're not, you're not doing this, you're just a family guy. Do you ever turn it off? Do you ever turn it off when you meet new people? And he just gave me the typical Ryan Serhant answer, which is like, I get it. You're in front of a large group of people. You're there to a motivate. A large group of realtors. A large group of realtors, yeah. You're so there you're going to say, right. He gave me, he was basically like, you don't. And I just like, look like a douchebag. And I'm like, oh, I wish it was just me and him in the room, you know? I really want to know his real answer. Like, I want to know if he's happy. I want to know if like anybody he meets is trying to meet him to be his actual friend or trying to meet him just to be on his team or take something away. Because when you're successful and people see you're successful, they want, they want to take, 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 take. And I just wanted to ask him like on a personal level, like what that's like and how he works past it. And uh, because it was a lot of people there, I feel like I didn't get that opportunity. No, in context, especially in those clips, you don't get a lot of context. I always search for the context. I was happy to see you on there knowing you like, oh, you know, because I saw you post it and saw him post it. And then, uh, you know, yeah, kind of saying, that's I not. Ryan, dude. I'm going to if I get my license in the city, I'm going to hang it in Ryan's office and he could charge me 100 percent commission to him. I don't care. I was yeah. like, just let me shadow you, dude. Let me hang out with you, <laughs> you know, and I'll, I'll sell. No, you'll definitely sell. He watches this. Um, and he's like, oh, I should hire this guy. That's very, it resonated a lot with me because I feel like that too, especially with a brand called Bearded Banker for 10 years. Sometimes I'll be, even like dinners, you know, the wife's setting up a double date with a couple. And I know when I go out, they're just going to ask me real estate questions and it's fine, but it's just, you know, nonstop and it's friends now. So that's okay. But sometimes I'll say, I don't want to go. I, I need to chill for, you know, I've had a, a, a long week of doing the same thing and I just need a minute. And feeling like, so when you asked that question and you, you had that explanation you, you had, it resonates a lot with me. And I appreciate it. You know, we have, we're, we're people with all these complex levels of personalities and relationships. It's not just real estate all the time. Even to the, I want to talk about how you do your business and, you know, your character, your, your, your funny, the way you dress, like it's very casual sometimes. Like, does that hinder you ever? Do you, do you think about it? I'm, you know, I'm in a black tee right now. Like I like to be comfortable. We know we could do the suit thing when we need to. I haven't yeah. had to in a couple of years. And, you know, I think we're both at a level where we can kind of just let the knowledge speak for itself. But how, how do you feel about all that? Um, honestly, like that, that question, I felt like I'm glad it resonated with you. I felt like it resonated with a very select few people in the, in the crowd in person too, because I felt People, people were texting and stuff. I felt people stop what they're doing and like listen to the question, the rest of it, and then quickly listen to him. And because I feel like very successful people want to know the true answer to that question. The from happiness someone, question. Yeah, from someone like Ryan Serhant. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe one day he'll email me and maybe we'll grab lunch. I would jizz if he did that. Here's what, here's what I really meant. Here's what I meant to say. Here's what I really meant. And then he's like, do you want to be best friends? And I'd be like, yeah. When did this infatuation happen? Million dollar listing? Watching this hustle? Did you, did you, do you feel like you are him in another, in New Jersey? Like how did this? I mean, he's just so cool. He is. Like, yeah. I love the brand, like the Sirhan logo, the blue, just like, his do look at the YouTube video of his office tour. Fucking, he does it. He does it right, and it takes a lot of money and sales volume to do that, and it takes a lot of people who are successful to stand behind you. And I feel like in New Jersey, it's a little different. And I think he's starting to realize that too because he's trying to open up offices in New Jersey, and it's hard. It's hard. Where in New Jersey? Um, I know he did something in Jersey City with like a group that was already in office. I think he's trying to open up all over because he's he's all over New York. He's in Miami. He's he's everywhere. Yeah, he will get there, but he's just got to open up his own office. But it's hard to like it goes against like everything that I preach because I'm joining an office that's called Sirhan. It's like me changing the name of Prestige to Aziz. Aziz. Aziz, yo, you got to join Aziz. And what you said earlier about these top producers, like when you're signing the check, you respect it. Like, I'm not coming to work. You're, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I'm not going to work for you. Why, why would I expect you to work for me? Right. <laughs> so, 
You got to join Aziz. <laughs> Aziz. No, that makes sense. Um, do you find it hard to kind of like stay true to yourself in the game? I mean, you, you, you like watches, you like the cars, you like, you know, you have your, your personality sprinkled into your social media. Do you ever get like imposter syndrome? They talk about a lot with being in real estate, like you're not a typical realtor. No, I fucking love what I've built. The Nespresso yeah. thing. The Nespresso thing is huge. The Nespresso thing. I was talking to my barber today. So I got a haircut this morning. You mentioned it when you, you, you saw me. Uh, Eddie, he was on the podcast a couple episodes ago. And I was like, yeah, I'm doing an interview today with Joey Aziz. He's like, oh, um, let me see his page. I don't know like his name. And I was like, y- you know who he is. I show him your page. He's like, oh, the Nespresso's. <laughs> I'm like, yep, yeah, that's Joey. Dude, you know how many realtors are copying that? Like, what the I fuck? saw and I saw you post about it. I'm so happy you called him out. That well, was a I'll while ago, it. too. You were like, oh, Nespresso's? Scroll down, scroll down on social media. Scroll yeah. down to 2016 before these people were even licensed. I was giving away Nespresso machines like Oprah. Mm-hmm. How dare you? How <laughs> dare you? If you're watching this, how dare you? What are you doing? <laughs> That's my thing, bro. I buy them 50 at a time. In Call a up clip, yeah. Desk. Call I've up every Bloomingdale's Wells in Bergen, Hudson, Essex, and Passaic County. I've bought Nespresso machines there. <laughs> You want to go? You want to go to my garage right now? I have fifteen espresso machines in my garage. How dare you? Where did that come from? Do you have one? In, like, do you love espresso machines? I love coffee. Okay, I love coffee, but I was like struggling to find a gift for someone, and um, I was like in Bloomingdale's, and I was like, oh, I'll just get this for now. And I gave it to my client. And they fucking loved it. They were like, oh, I fucking love that. I need one of these. And I was like, oh, this is good. I was taking a sticker, putting my name on it, on the machine, putting it back in the box. There you go. It's an espresso machine. And, and every sale been, comes with one. Every sale comes with one. Every buy, sale. sell, listing, buyers. Everything. I've driven over an hour to give a client that I've never met an espresso machine because that's my brand. That's Stand your brand. It. I guarantee you know? it. I guarantee it. You're getting an espresso machine. I had a lady the other day. I went to get, she signed the listing, babe, where... She's like, can I have the Nespresso machine now? And I fucking gave it to her. Did you? <laughs> I mean, she signed the listing agreement. So like, it's gonna I'm sell. like, listen, here's how confident I am. Here you go. <laughs> That's actually great. That's also back to what you were saying about just like keeping it real with clients and putting them first. It's like, okay, you asked for it. It's my brand. Here you go. I'm confident in this deal and what we're signing. So it almost like reinforces everything where most people be like, no, you don't, because of my process, you don't get it until we close. That's how it goes. I had a client, uh, they, they sold their house and they moved to Florida and timing and just, I couldn't meet up with them before the closing and they moved. I shipped an espresso machine to Florida. I shipped it to them and they got it and they were like, wow, you really do give an espresso machine with every closing. I'm like, no matter what, dude. No matter I'll where like, in the world. I'll be shot and I'll just close. I'll be like, ah, send John. <laughs> <laughs> Your last words. Your last words. Espresso. Oh, my God. They should clip this in. That's, that's good marketing for them. No, they will not collab with me. They will they not. They have to. No, bro. They it's been have years. To. Just keep going. It'll happen. It'll I'll happen. show you my DMs with Nespresso. They're like, thanks. Yeah, that's all they care about. Thanks for the support. I'm like, I'm at 800 Nespresso machines, bro. Look me up. Something. Post me on your page. I have an IV drip with like an espresso. (laughs) Yeah, that thing, you've been doing it for a long time. I remember, I'm just thinking back to when you posted that thing on your stories. Like, oh, you guys are sending Nespresso machines now? You had like 15 of them in an office. Been doing this for years. That's awesome, man. Um. Before we wrap up, we're already about an hour. That flew by. I have a couple more things I want to ask you about. Um, The market. Uh, What's your advice with what's going on, either for agents or clients? You touched a little bit on it, but with just rates in the economy. Um, If someone's like, I don't know if it's the time for me or agents struggling, obviously, you kind of gave some gems there with what they can do. But what's your take on the market? Are you buying? Are Are you still investing? Always, I assume. Um, everybody's at a different position in life. If you have a family and you need a single family house, 
secure a single family house for your family. If you're young and you want to invest, secure an investment. Um, what I say to all my clients is crouching tiger, hidden dragon. If you're in the market and you need a property, whether it's a townhouse, single family, two family, whatever, crouching tiger, hidden dragon, get pre-approved, have your money ready to go. The market goes like this. And it's weird because the market changes like every week almost now. So like you'll go to a listing, there's no offers. But that house last year would have 12 offers. But it's just timing. Mm -hmm. So like the best deals I've gotten were because I'm ready. I always try to like, I'll always buy something and then try to be ready again as soon as possible. Right away. Right away. And then if it takes six months, great. If it takes one month, great. If it takes two years, great. But just make sure you buy smart with an educated realtor and make sure your funds are there and your pre-approval is good and you're ready to fucking go at any given moment. Yeah, I made a video on this numerous times in different different ways, but I always have a pre-approval ready for myself. And my, like, it's always just there, no matter what's going on. I'm sure you do the same. I think everybody to. should, like all my friends, I'm like, we got to get you a pre-approval. Even if you're not looking for a year, two years, five years, just be ready, know where you're at. We can make a game plan. Yeah. People don't understand the power of that hidden drag, that being ready, right? Like you're just ready to go it at any given time. Balls. Yeah. It also takes balls. Like getting pre-approved is a step, but taking the next step takes balls. Getting pre-approved and having the money is like great, but using all of it to buy property takes balls. Mm -hmm. And then to do it every year, it takes even more balls. You gotta have a lot of balls. Big old yeah. balls. So I'm Big over your shoulder balls. and just keep buying, keep going. <laughs> What do you say, so you just mentioned something else that made me think of another question here. You, you mentioned that oh. client you had that wanted the condo, bought a two-family, 400K, yeah. then he sold, bought a $600,000 house. Yeah. I know you're a proponent for you know, holding real estate. Are you ever coaching them to be like, hey, you shouldn't sell this? Or you're just like, you got to do, because again, if you're a proponent of holding, you're more of a buyer's agent than a listing agent, but you're a huge listing agent. So people are selling all the time. Do you, how do you balance that with your advice oh, or, or what you feel about real estate this. there's so many listings i'm like damn i should have bought that damn i should have bought it. But, but you can't buy them all you can't buy them all right like yeah them i would say um i would say i the only property i've ever sold i only sold two properties in my lifetime one was a two family in clifton and one was a three family in belleville that was my first property. The only reason I sold the three family in Belleville is because I sold it for, I bought it for 400 and I sold it for 850. And that's just the market. That's just luck. That's just timing. That's just me bringing the property to its max potential. And the only reason I sold it is because it was pre-1940. That was a big decider for me because when you have a pre-1940s house, it's a brick foundation. And there was, you know, foundation work that I knew needed to be done. It was also like a giant thing growing up through the siding. I was like, Ugh, I don't want to deal with that five years from now. So I'm like, let me just sell it, get max. Because I knew I was never going to get 850 for that again because rates were like 4% and they were creeping up. And I'm like, oh, I see what's happening. Let me dump this. And then the other one was a two family in Clifton, which made me like two grand a month, which is amazing. And it was fully renovated, but it was also pre-1940. And, it, and at the time I had an opportunity to buy a building. So the only reason I sold it is because I quickly 1031 exchanged it into an off-market building. And that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's like a needle in a desert. You know, you're never going to find that opportunity again. So the trick is like being, having your funds, being pre-approved and be ready to pounce on a situation like that. So I had a unicorn and I traded up for like a diamond unicorn, which is like the only move you should do if you're going to sell real estate. But other than that, don't sell anything. Just buy smart and keep everything. Do you believe or see that there are still properties out there today that can cash flow $2,000 a house? No. No. If anything, people are breaking even, maybe coming out of pocket for now because of rates and prices, at least in our area. If you're buying a two family and you're living in one side, that shouldn't matter to you. You need to secure the property, find a place to live, and kill two birds with one stone. You got a property, you got a place to live, and you're no longer a tenant. So a lot of people don't realize. They're like, what about my cash flow? It's like, dude, what are you doing? You need a house for your family or yourself. You I need say a place the same to live. thing, man. Like, 
cash flow right now is not if you're doing that well, for I this. Do, this isn't yeah. YouTube. Buy a fucking right. house and shut up. And guess what? You buy a house, you live in it for two years, you rent out, you renovate and rent out the top floor. You keep the bottom for yourself, or vice versa, and you keep it. And then rates drop to four percent, right? You refinance and now you're cash flowing. You've written off the taxes, the insurance, any depreciation against the property. And now you're ready to buy another property. Mm -hmm. As opposed to what? You've been a tenant for three years, like a jerk off? Come on. And maybe get some equity out of it. Maybe, you know, cash out. Beautiful, man. I want to leave my mortgage people with something. And you mentioned your phone ringing off the hook with these LOs. Someone wants to work with Joey Aziz as a lender. What do they have to do? Or, or anyone at your tenure, what do you think? Like a brand new LO calling is going to have a rough shot. Yeah. I'll be brutally honest. If you're a brand new loan officer, you should skip realtors and just target the buyers direct. Build a sick relationship with the buyers and target them direct because realtors suck. <laughs> realtors suck. But I'm at a point in my career where I've built a relationship with um, a lender who we collab on like realtor.com leads and things like that. We split it. So like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I say. So like the second something happens, obviously I'll change, but I just need somebody who's brutally honest and, and with not just me, but my clients too. Yeah, I think I, I agree with that. I think going back to the branding, kind of being in the forefront for the buyers, and then you can send them to whatever realtors you want to work with and work together with those realtors. Yeah. Um, I feel like lenders, and we've worked together before on a couple of deals, so, you know, we know how each other work. Yeah, yeah. But, um, no, I mean, I listen, like... if you're watching this and you haven't used Danny, for sure, I, I can vouch that he's a very good lender. <laughs> well, yeah, 100%. You. I'll send you the Venmo afterwards. Um, but no, having a preferred lender, you know, I feel like sometimes for lenders, you're only as good as your last deal and realtors are quick to cut you off. And I never liked that model, um, yeah. especially paying for leads and marketing. You know, I've done it. I do it. Don't love it. I like having the relationship with the clients myself. and. When yeah. I know someone, hey, this would be a really good lead for Joe. And I like working with Joe and yeah. I don't have, you know, we're not obligated, but it's fun when we do and we collab that way. Then, you know, I'll send it to whoever I want. Um, but it's, it's hard, I think, some of these LOs. And I know the phones are ringing off the hook because our LOs are dying in droves and just calling every realtor they can find that's doing something. Yeah. So I'm sure your phone's ringing off the hook. So um, I just wanted to give that to the people. I appreciate that. Um, anything else we didn't touch that you want to that you want to cover before we we wrap up? Oh, your dream home. You were mm. talking about a dream home. We're not going to say where it is, but um, did you build it? Did you buy it? What what did it have to have? What did it have to come with? I know that was a big goal for you. Are are you there? Have you attained it? Um, I help a lot of people find their dream home, so I see a lot of homes, and. I am a very big fan of ranches. I love ranches. Me too. Dude, best home. Because you might have to find me my ranch, actually. I'd love to. But I wanted a 70s ranch, and it had to be brick. Mm. Another thing in my portfolio is everything's brick now. So, like, I love brick. It's just indestructible. Maintenance-free. And I just... I wanted a brick ranch. I wanted a lot of land. I wanted good schools. I wanted low taxes. And I was like, I'm probably going to buy it in December, January, because like, that's the best time. And last December, I came across a house that was not selling because I needed a new septic tank. It's fucked. It's like 50 grand right there. It needed to be gutted on the inside. But it was a gorgeous 70s ranch, all brick on an acre and a half. And I just pulled the trigger on. I was listed for one four. I got it for nine fifty. And some people will say nine fifty is a premium, but that was in December, just this past December. Was it priced right, do you think? At one four or was it? it was a, honestly it was worth one two. Okay. If the realtor priced it at one two, it probably would have sold in five minutes. Um but I got it for nine fifty because it was a reverse mortgage, like kids were selling it. And um I've been approached over 15 times to sell it and for one, two, one, three, because it's a struggle right now to find 
any decent property on a good piece of land, regardless if it needs to be renovated or not. And um, I'm working on the plans right now to, you know, gut renovate and expand and make it my dream home. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Congratulations. So I'm going to stay here till I die. I'm going to raise my family here. I'm going to like those crazy people. That's Security awesome. cameras everywhere. Oh, yeah. Cameras Go all out. Everything, bro. I'd like to see it. Whenever hit me up, we'll grab lunch or show to. I'd like to see it. And I'm serious about because I everything you mentioned is literally what I've been looking for personally. A mm-hmm. brick ranch in New Jersey on a piece of land, which is hard to that's just a unicorn in itself almost. Unicorn, yeah. Um and since you have that passion, I know you might be the guy. I got you. That's awesome. Are you <laughs> always. <laughs> always. I don't Dude, know for the price we gotta check the price, right? But pre approved <laughs> for something, yeah yeah um i appreciate it man i know you're busy thank you for taking the time uh of course. we'll have yeah. all your links and everything absolutely in the description we'll share some uh some posts for the people and uh yeah we'll do lunch soon then joe and jay realtor on instagram there we go anything else joseph prestige aziz. type in joseph aziz into youtube follow like and subscribe tell all your friends and on that note Danny, thanks. thanks oh, wait, I have to do my outro. Oh. Okay, cool. So I don't know if you know this song by 2 Chains. It's called Mortgage Free. Mortgage Free? And I wanted to use it, but I don't want, you know, the copyright issues. And what he mm-hmm. says is, the goal in life is to be mortgage free. Control your emotions. Have integrity. If you want to use my likeness, I need equity. And if you're really trying to win, you need to bet with me. And Joey Aziz. Wow. Dude, beautiful, right? That was beautiful. My man, we'll talk soon. Andy, thanks, man. Thank you again, no doubt.